homebrewers welcome hope you're having a fantastic one feels like a small ice age since i've seen you and that's because it kind of has been i've been inundated with work because uh you know that's that's fun paying bills and rent and you know being normal um yeah it didn't work out so i got a new job one that actually um is able to do the things that i originally said so uh, we're making videos again and it's going to be good so today we're going to be making the lazy hazy volume 2 maybe hazy volume 2 <laughs> and i'm calling it the road to el dorado because i'm cheesy and i have that disney thing stuck in my head so this is an ipa for people that don't like ipas i know it's a bit of a bit of one to get your head around so i have actually done this in the past and it was called the Lazy Hazy, the Cheats IPA. I'll stick the videos up there for the original one. Now the great thing about making that video is that I actually have a basis to work from. And I can officially say it is the best non-IPA IPA I have ever drank. Because I don't like IPA. I know, it's weird, right? I'm not a great fan of ales. You know, pale ales, Indian ales, what, whatever. Name, put the word ale in front of it, not a fan of it. I'm also not a great fan of excessive bitterness, which is another thing that IPAs are kind of known for. They do have a high bitter rating. They're, you know, they, they've got the bitterness in there. That's one of the things that draw people to it. That's one of the things that draw me away from it. So when you mix excessive bitterness with that taste of ale, put them together, I don't like it. But I like the concept of IPA, so uh, I'm making an IPA for people that don't like IPA. It's pretty straightforward. So, because I've already done this before, I actually have a basis to work from. So, I dry hopped. Only dry hopped in my first one. And uh, I have to say, super tasty. Mwah. Let me see more. Loved it to pieces. Um, it did have bitterness in there, but it wasn't stupid. You know, it was, yeah, a little bit more than a beer, but not an IPA. No, nowhere near an IPA. It was palatable so if you like ipas this is probably not one for you because it will not be as bitter um, dry hopping only produces around 30 percent of the bittering that boiling does uh, that's because well you know the hops have oils in them the oils break down and that's what makes the bitterness we speed up that process by boiling the hops but leaving beer for a long time especially heavily hopped stuff the hops will just they will degrade and turn into bitterness so there are a couple of things we need that we know from this ipas are best drank fresh if you like all those fruity aromas and whatever it is you added in there and not a lot of bittering if on the other hand you like a lot of the bittering and not a lot of the aromas just leave the same ipa just in a cupboard somewhere for six months and it will taste a lot better and have less aroma more like a normal ipa so what we're going to be using for this particular batch is the simply lager kit now they do uh, richie's do a full range of these so you can buy the kit in ale but you know it's a bit pointless for me because i don't like ale i won't drink it so i got the lager kit because i like lager now i wanted some hops and instead of using the citra because they are my go-to hops they i like them so i'm going to use them this time i was shopping for hops and found two that I just have to use because they just look so good. Now the first one is, uh, you've probably seen it a lot, it's called Lemon Drop. Oh yes. Now these are both, these, these can be both used for bittering and aroma and flavor because you know flavor, aroma, if you can taste it, it counts as a flavor. Um, so you can just make an IPA with just these alone but yeah, I like the lemon drop, the lemony, citrusy. Mmm. They actually smell pretty good. That was a nice one. Now, the one that really sort of got my mouth going was this one. It came from the US of A, because uh, that's where it came from. And it is called El Dorado. See where I got the cheesy name from. And supposedly, uh, this is supposed to be like. 
uh, tropical fruit, bits of melon, you know, all, all the tropical things. So we're trying to make a tropical IPA. Now these Eldorado hops are actually whole hops. They're actually the full, mm. never actually used whole hops. I've only ever used pellets. Should be pretty much the same. What we're gonna be doing, it's gonna be pretty much the same. So that being said, that's, uh, yeah, we've done this bit. Let's actually get to making it. Cause that's the bit we want. See you in a minute. But before we start doing all of the cool stuff, we need to actually prepare our malt. So it comes in the bag, which is cool because it saves the tin, but it's pretty much the same. Take the yeast off the bottom. Heat and yeast do not mix. So we need to soften this malt, whichever malt you choose. So in it goes into a tub. It doesn't need to be sterilized. It just needs to be cleaned because I have boiled the kettle like so, and in goes the boiling water. And that will soften the malt and make it easier to, well, get it in the uh, fermenter. So we'll put that to one side. So now is the great, the great bit. We need to sterilize everything. So I use bleach and washing up liquid, thin bleach from Tesco's and a bit of dish soap. Mine happens to be fairy, which I need to buy more of, but still works. Use whichever sterilizer you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and sterilize my worktop, all my utensils, and my demijohn. In this case, it is a five gallon fermenting vessel, which I have lovingly hid behind me. It currently has a solution of bleach and washing up liquid in there. I need to go and rinse that in a minute, but I need to sterilize my worktop and any equipment I'm gonna be using. Use whichever sterilizer you use, it, it all works the same. So I'm gonna go rinse this all off and we'll be back. And like magic, we have returned and it's all been done. So our demijohn, in our case, a five gallon water, uh, five gallon fermentation bucket. I'm so used to saying water bottle. Uh, our five gallon tub has been bleached, rinsed, washed, and looking pretty. So just give it a whiff. It smells fresh, but not bleachy. If it smells bleachy or it's still got bubbles in it, Rinse it some more. Um, bleach and booze does not mix. So the side has been sterilized using a combination of bleach and washing up liquid. Dish soap for those people that don't know what washing up liquid is. I've got the hydrometer which is in fresh water because it's been pre-sterilized. The bags have been sterilized. So have the scissors, check me. And uh, well, that just leaves putting all this together. It's actually really easy because we don't have to do all the steps that craft brewers do because we literally just take our lovely heated malt that looks lovely and now it's pretty yeah pretty liquidy so let's just add it into the bucket oh yeah let's pour some of this bad boy in Just giving it a last little, yeah, to squeeze it. I know, I mean, I can't decide if I like the cans more or the packets. I mean, technically you can rinse out both of them, but I don't know, let's just get the last out. There's one you can sort of screw it up. It makes you feel like a man. Sure, and I end up getting some on my hands. Mmm, malty. Well, that tastes good. That really does taste malty. A little bit of bitterness, mmm. And it's just more extract. Now I've got to go wash my hands. Oh well, just, nah. I love more extract. So all of our beer malt is in here. My hands have been rewashed, so they're all clean. Oh, and the malt tastes good. I can see where it kind of says it's got the aromatic sort of caramel notes to it, because it tastes good and it's got bitterness to it, but you know, needs must. So the beer kit on its own isn't enough to produce a a high enough percentage beer. We are looking, or I am looking, to make an IPA, and IPAs are traditionally a stronger beer. I want mine somewhere around the eight, possibly nine percent mark, depending on how this malt ferments out. So normally you would use a brew enhancer, but we're making an IPA and we want it to, well, basically not have too much beer flavor. So instead of using beer enhancers and the brew kits and the whatever it is that you want to use, 
I'm actually just opting for a couple of kilos of sugar. Now I'm using sugar, one, because it's going to raise the alcohol level, and two, it has no flavor of its own. So uh, the beer kit here is where we get the flavor from, and to make it more IPA-ish, I'm just adding a neutral flavored uh, sugar booster. Use whichever one you like, but uh, I'm using sugar. So in goes two kilos of sugar. Oh yes, looking good. And now we're making syrup. So in goes our second kilo of sugar, because well, we already know that's what we need, so in it goes. Mmm, actually looking forward to this. Now I have boiled the kettle again, because we need to dissolve all this sugar in. So guess what? That's what we're gonna do. In goes boiling water. I'm probably going to need to do that again. And uh, got my stirry spoon. Not a wooden spoon this time because I broke it. <gasps> and uh, I'm just going to go and stir my sugary syrup. So I've been stirring this just for a minute or two while I've reboiled the kettle. I mean, this is pretty uh, syrupy, and there's still bits of sugar that aren't dissolved. So. In goes another batch of boiling water. Oh yeah. Looking good. Now we just got to keep going until basically all the sugar and the syrup has dissolved. Because you don't want to end up with a, a chunk of sugar right at the bottom. We want it to ferment and we want an accurate hydrometer reading. So just beat the living crap out of it. Don't worry about oxygen or anything like that. Just quite literally stir until it's mixed. Yeah, and that's all now dissolved. So now comes the fun part. We're just gonna top this up with cold water until we reach the 23 liter mark. Now, if you are using one of these brew buckets, check it. <laughs> check that these measurements are accurate. Uh, the easy way to do it is fill it full of water and just do it in whatever increments that you have. And that will tell you, I know that this is accurate to within like 200 mil, good enough for me. So I'm going to go ahead and use my kettle since it's already been sterilized because I boiled it and just top this up with cold water. This is the boring bit. So many kettle trips later and we now have 23 liters in our demijohn slash fermenting bucket. So I've got my spoon again, I put it on the side, but the side was sterilized, so I don't have to worry about, funny enough, infection. I'm gonna grab my spoon and I'm gonna stir this to make sure all the syrup is moved from the top to the bottom. It's all perfectly dissolved. This could take a minute, but it does look good. May have to play with this a bit more. So, <laughs> Just make sure that's all stirred in. It's got a nice, nice bit of foam to it. So let's just stick the lid on there. And move that to one side, because that's our basic beer kit done. What we need to do is take a hydrometer reading, but we can't because there's too much foam. Mm. Oh, that tastes good. And we also need to get our hops ready. So uh, the only bit of special equipment is uh, one of these, a pair of scales to do some measuring. Though you can just eyeball it, but at the same time, the, li the likelihood that you'll be able to reproduce it, kind of slim, but uh, you can. So I'm gonna leave this for a few minutes and we're gonna be right back. So to save a bit of time and you know, watching someone weigh something out. You can do that yourself. So what I've done is I've taken the lemon drop hops. Oh yes, smell good. And I've measured out 55 grams. Now I'm gonna be using one of these little uh, keepers, like a tea bag for steeping it in the beer. The idea is when I come to siphoning, the pellets uh, will be a lot easier to siphon out. The whole, uh, the whole hops, I'm just gonna add in whole. Hopefully these will drop to the bottom. 
and they should be a lot easier to siphon off because well they're huge look at them they're huge and chunky so hopefully it'll just trub out all to the bottom and will be nice whereas this stuff kind of floats around at the top and at the bottom so i'm hoping putting it in a bag will uh, stop that problem because it takes forever to siphon so I've got 55 grams of lemon drop hops and I am using the full 100 grams of the El Dorado whole hops. So that is 150 grams of usable hops and 155 grams in total. Now I'm doing it in one go because, well, that's what I want. So I'm going to do that. One and done. That's what I like. So uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So let's open up she and let's take a look. And most of the uh, foam has died down, so we're going to take a hydrometer reading with our lovely hydrometer. Let's, let's do all this now, make our life easy. In she goes. And we'll just leave that for a minute. Well, our hydrometer reading, if this ferments to dryness, but it's beer, so it won't. But again, we take the measurement from what it actually is, not what we expect. It is saying it is 1.0. Five, eight. That's pretty good. So that is approximately 9% if this ferments to dryness, but it's not going to do that. But that's what it is if it ferments to dryness, so we're going to go with that. And then the second video, we will take a second hydrometer reading, and that will give us our actual alcohol percentage. Um, people do ask me quite a lot about that. It's like, well, you said it was uh, 13%, but it only ferments down to like whatever, and you only get like 10. And it's like, yes, but you take the measurement for what it is, not what you expect. Take two. So, now we just need to add our hops. We're pretty damn, we're, we're pretty damn close to finishing. So, oh, in goes 100 grams of El Dorado whole hops. Look at them, they're all floaty. Sometimes I wonder, about myself. Alright, and in they go. They're all, yeah. Oh, they'll sort themselves out. They smell good. And 100 grams of them should be pretty good. It just floats. Want to make sure I get the full 100 grams? Right, that's that one done. So now we've got our little sterile little pellet bag. And in goes our 55 grams of the lemon drop pellets. Ah, he says. Throwing them everywhere. Don't miss the one. Right. Seal the bag and then dump it in like a tea bag. Probably not like that. So I'm just going to give this a stir because um, all the hops are dry and they need to be moist. So let's stir this bad boy. There we go. So I was trying to stir it, but the uh, freeze dried hops were just a solid chunk. So I ended up using my hand. It's not really that much of a problem because well, I sterilize everything. So my hands have been sterilized. So it should be pretty good. Either way, if it goes off, then we'll blame the hand. So our hops are now all mixed in. We've got the hops, we've got the beer. It looks, well, it looks like a tub of something. And it is starting to, it has a caramel sort of multi flavor and a little hint of a hop. And that's only just happened. So to finish this up, all we've got to do is add in our yeast. Now it comes with a ba bag of beer yeast, which is probably ale yeast because ale yeast is one of the easier ones to brew with uh, as opposed to lager, uh, lager yeast, which needs to be temperature controlled. And who wants to do that if you don't have to? Unless you're a serious brewer, he says dropping his battery. So we just open up the bag and dump the lot straight on top. 
There we go. Exactly. Now all we've got to do is close the lid. So close it on three sides and just leave it open just enough on the other one. So it's still closed, but gas can escape. And now we just leave this to one side. The only thing I will say about making beers like this or any beer, store it somewhere dark. Uh, it's one of the few alcohols where storing it in the dark makes it taste better. Uh, you don't get the skunky profile. So just stick a towel over it, put it in the airing cupboard, stick it in, you know, anywhere dark. And uh, we're going to come back in about three weeks, maybe before, but we're going to aim for three weeks just to make sure because it is getting a little bit colder. And hopefully we should end up with something that is akin, if not even better than the original Lazy Hazy. I'm looking forward to this. Will it be good? Don't know. Could it be good? Yes. So, I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys, giving you some ideas, you know, mix and match as you see fit. And yeah, don't forget to check out some of the other videos, subscribe, you know, comment, do all those things YouTubers tell you to do, and carry on homebrewing, guys. See you later.